you're muted. <laughs> oh my gosh that is so funny well what up guys this is dave sharp welcome to wake up legendary <laughs> you gotta be a little bit crazy to do this man um you really do uh, look, we just had some, some technical challenges with our guest. <laughs> it was like his, his, his computer was doing like, you know, backflips, but then he got on his phone and it was perfect. I kicked the show off. I'm muted. I'd launch into a big welcome to <laughs> I'm totally muted. <laughs> hey, you know what? Monday, Monday, la, 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 la. I'll also spare you the uh, the ear torture of me singing any longer. With that being said, let's go ahead and bring in our guest and get this bad boy kicked off. James Little, welcome to the show, my brother. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Man, you see what's up, brother. Only up from here. <laughs> Technology is great, isn't it? We can only go up from here. It can only it's, get better. You know what I mean? Better. It can only get better. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, man, um, you are in, in, uh, I like you're an ex oil field worker who is sort of now embracing un if I understand correctly, I'm really excited to, to, to delve into this and hear this in your own words. Who's not only embrace, who's like embracing unemployment is, is that correct? Give us a little bit of your backstory and, and if I'm right, tell me what that means. Yeah, so um, basically for me, I spent eight eight years working in the oil field. Um, it was a cool career. It was a cool thing to do. However, the, the better I got at what I did, the less and less time I was spending at home. So slowly we began to build a plan to get out of that lifestyle and I could spend more time with my wife and kind of get to know each other after dragging her all around Canada for eight years. And uh, just as we started initiating our plan of moving into our motor home and traveling around, um, Rona came like an unwelcomed house guest and uh, decided to camp out on everybody's couch for way too long. So uh, the company I was working for kind of kind of helped me with my plan because they uh, did a bunch of layoffs. So they gave me a bit of a, a bit of a cash handshake and uh, see you later. So are you now kind of, I, when we ask you uh, a couple of questions in writing um, before you, you, uh, you know, when we invited you onto the show, you said, um, let me find it. What did I say? Yeah. So <laughs> I was, inter I was interested uh, in, in, um, I was interested uh, or I thought it was kind of an interesting uh Oh, I am now currently all in on being unemployable. That was the line. I'm all in on being unemployable. What does that mean to you? To me, that means I am all in on putting my own my own stuff together, and I don't got to go back to what everybody considers a regular job ever again. I. I mm. Unemployable. I no longer want to live that lifestyle. I no longer want to serve the other people to help them build their lives and just be a slave to the job. So are you, are you, um, are you, uh, are you like, do you think that's a mindset thing, James? Yeah, I, I think it is. I think you need to be. How can I put it? You got to be out of your head and you got to be convinced almost to know that this is where you need to be and that this isn't working for you. And you have to convince yourself that you want to be that way and you don't want to be in the daily grind anymore. Yeah. Un being unemployable to me means um, it means that I'm psych I'm psychologically unemployable. I'm I'm un I'll give you an example. I before legendary um I was 
involved in a couple of different affiliate uh ma mainly it was a this this was a water filtration company it was a it was a product that i was promoting and um you maybe even have heard of it before but it's got an, a multi-level structure and basically we had blown this up our team our group of marketers had blown this whole uh you know we were really doing good and we went to their like convention and they were like, they put up on a screen like, well, this is how not to do it, you know, because we were doing internet marketing and we, and they wanted us to do, you know, home and hotel meetings and show the plan and stuff like that. And, and, and I was like, God, I was like, here I go again. This is a great example of my like being psychologically unemployable because I've hit a ceiling in this company. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've hit a ceiling in this company and I wasn't even an employee of the company. I mean, it was just an example of me getting into a space to where they were trying to put sort of, you know, they were, they were looking and it didn't have anything to do with compliance stuff. It wasn't about compliance. It was just about them being threatened by my success. Right. Trying and to control. Well, yeah, being threatened by my success. Yeah. And I think that's a big, I think that's a big challenge in, that's a big thing that comes up in, in just jobs and in, in corporate America or corporate Canada in, in it's really common. And it's one of the reasons why people have a hard time climbing the ladder and succeeding as employees is because people are, once you start to succeed and do well, people end up getting threatened by your success, Right. So, it, you know, and then they try to sabotage your success or they don't give you the promotion or whatever. That's, that's been my experience, right? Yeah. You're laughing. Did you have, have you experienced something like that too? That was, uh, that was the final nail in the coffin. In my oil field job was a uh, conversation was had about a big promotion. Things were implied. Yeah. And then when it came down to it, somebody else was moved into the position and I was like, I'm yeah, done. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the thing that, that, and I want to talk about kind of what you've learned here in legendary and going through the blueprints and about your story and stuff here in a second. But I, I, I really hammer with everybody here that you are building your business and your brand. If you are an affiliate of a company, you are not an employee or I don't even encourage you to think of yourself as a contractor for that company. That's simply a company that you're partnering with and you are, um, you're, you're, you're referring customers to their products. You're building your brand though. You're building your business. And what's most important is that your customers have a relationship with you that when you send them an email, when, when they see another video from you on TikTok or YouTube or a post on Facebook or whatever, that they recognize you. Sure. If, if, if you're an affiliate of a product, you hope that they also resonate with whoever the company is or the, or the, the, you know, the guru, the spokesperson of that company. But it's also really important for you to have a relationship and to be building your brand in your business. And that I think is something that also I took from your intake form was that going through our blueprints and so forth, you've kind of learned how to communicate your story and better build a relationship with your audience by like telling your story. Tell, tell us a little bit about what that kind of learning experience has been and some of the light bulbs that have gone off for you. So uh, I'll step back a few years. We originally started our plan by getting in with this program to do a, an online agency Uh do the digital agency and work from home and freedom this and freedom that. And it taught us a lot, but it didn't teach us everything. And we're not, we weren't exactly a, Hey, go give me your money type salesy people either. So yeah. it, was, it was a struggle and we never went in 110% over the two years we tried it. And then uh, I knew we weren't in the right place because I still kept looking for something else. I still kept looking for that one thing to make me go, ah, oh, this is where I need to be. And uh, I downloaded this ebook and just put it away in a file. And one day my wife was going through some things and she's like, where'd this come from? <laughs> and lo and behold, it was uh, an affiliate of legendary who put together this ebook talking about affiliate marketing. And 
long story short, we went through and took 15 day challenge and took the blueprints. And when it came time to purchase the blueprints, it was like, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. But then kind of rewatched the first couple of days and really listened to you and you really resonated with me in the way you told your story and the way that you just put yourself out there like, Hey, this is who I am. And it's okay for you to know who I am. Mm. As we went further and further through the blueprints, I was like, this, this guy's the real deal. Like this is, this is relatable to me because at the age of 14, I took my first sip and I was drunk for seven years. So, Mm. I mean, it, um, the whole challenge was very informational and, very informing but for me it was the relatability between myself and you Mm. that really uh really struck Mm -hmm. so how have you now turned that around and made that your own you know and and how do you continue to, to to plan to expand on that because if that is what resonated with you and that's what build the relationship between you and i even though you and i have never met up until now which is the power of both the internet, but also combining it with these strategies. How do you now plan are already or plan to kind of deploy this, these marketing strategies? Cause really that's what they are. I mean, they are marketing strategies. It's allowing you to see and understand who I am uh, and, and, um, and build rapport and build relationship and build trust. Right. Uh, so how are you now turning around and deploying those same principles in your business so now i've started to make myself more relatable um basically by being honest and truthful and just telling people you know i make quick little tiktok videos and be like truth bomb this and truth bomb that and uh i took part of my story and i wrote a book and i published it and that was a huge step for me um in my own sort of healing process i guess Mm. And now I'm just, I've just realized that my story is so much more than marketing. My story is something that people need to hear to help them in, in their journey, whether it be a marketing journey or whether it just be a life journey. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I can, I can see that it looks like you've also went and created your own digital product. Is that right? Yeah, that was one of the big takeaways from uh, from the business blueprints was diversifying and creating your own info product or digital product. And uh, I just put some stuff together and started trying to put it out there and help people mm-hmm. kind of understand that there's there's other ways. Yeah, the life they're stuck in. Yeah, um, I'm I'm looking at your uh, I'm looking at your sales page now, and it's 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 fairly well it's fairly well put together. Um, it's, uh, you've got a little sales video up here. Um, it's, it's a mindset product. Uh, you're charging $7 for it. You're giving away some good bonuses. So you've got a good, you know, irresistible offer here for this. And this, this is a great way to diversify your front end offer. Um, so, you know, you have something that is branded to you on the front end. Uh, looks like you've built the entire page here. You've got uh, an order bump and so forth. So you're you're also um, getting in now to to moving like from you know you're doing affiliate marketing, but you're also selling information via your own digital product. How does that feel? And what has that been like for you? It's been uh, it's been a project of 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 love, of labor, um, a lot of stress for me personally. I'm not one to put myself out there like that. So there's a mm-hmm. lot of vulnerability mm-hmm. in this project as I was putting it together. But uh, my wife just kept whispering in my ear, like, you got to do this. You got to do this. Mm-hmm. So it's been uh, it's been a journey for sure. It's been healing. It's been a therapeutic healing process for me personally. Hmm. Interesting. Because, and, and why is that? Because you're, you're talking about the effects of the poor mindset. Is it been, been a, a, the, as you say, a therapeutic healing process because that is also something that you've struggled with and now 
talk to, I'm just, I'm guessing, why do you say that it's been a therapeutic healing process? Because most people would think, well, who, you know, why, why does that matter? You know, you're simply, you know, the, we're just trying to make a buck here, build a business. There's obviously a lot of things that are popping up in my head when you say that. I'm interested, first of all, why you say it's been a therapeutic healing process and, and also why is that important for you in building a business? Uh, I am my own worst critic, as I'm sure most of us are, but I also struggle with, for years, getting out of my own head, um, feelings of self-doubt. It's always thinking I'm being judged, always, always looking inward and always judging my own self and my own abilities. And, um, yeah, just could never get out of my own head. Um, once I started once I started diving in and really looking inward and putting all this together, um, for me at first, it was kind of a pet project, just put some stuff together and see how it feels and see how it looks. And as I kept working on it, like I said, my wife just kept looking over and she was in my ear. She's like, you need to do this. You need to finish this. And so that's kind of why it was a therapeutic thing for me. And that's important because it helps it helps you deliver a genuine, true product that's mm. genuinely going to help people. Mm. Because if you're just looking to make the buck, they're going to see you a mile away. But if it's heartfelt and you're out to serve and your purpose is to genuinely help people, they're going to find you and they're going to come your way. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I think that if you can combine being genuine and authentic with an irresistible offer and of course, good marketing, um, you know, you, you can rule the world guys. You can literally rule the internet world. Exactly. And, and, and the, and the reason I think I, the reason why I, I believe personally is so many people struggle with affiliate marketing, but also then creating their own courses and co you know, coaching services and stuff <laughs> is because, is because, um, you know, the the they say the journey from the head to the heart is the is the longest journey a man will ever take. Right? Yeah. It's it's actually connecting this right here to this right here. But I also think for an entrepreneur, it's connecting this this to the wallet. Right? It's connecting the 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 intellectual stimulation. Like it's got to be engaging. It's got to be interesting. It can't just be a charity. Right. It's not just nobody's going to buy that. I, I had a, um, I had a, uh, I've had a couple of experiences to where I, you know, ran these kind of charitable promotions to where if somebody bought something, I was going to give something to charity and there just wasn't enough in it for them. Right. And in the, in the campaign flopped. So it has to be intellectually stimulating, meaning that they're going to get a, 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 a tangible kind of outcome. Like it can help them. It can help them make more money. It can help them get back their marriage or have a better marriage or parent their kids better, or, you know, climb mountains better or whatever. Um, and then it's gotta be genuine, right? It's gotta be genuine. And it's, it's, it does better when it's birthed out of a personal story or some sort of a story, some sort of someone story. That's why I call it the spokesperson. Um, if it can be your story, I've always used my story because it's just been easier that way. I, I can, nobody can tell my story like I can tell my story. Exactly. And quite frankly, if I was going to go over into another niche, James, at this point, like if I was going to go into relationship niche, which I've, I've considered that a couple of times, I'm passionate about like marriage and kind of relationships because I've really almost, um, shit the bed three or four times with my marriage, all my own fault. And I've learned that, Right. And now I'm, I'm, you know, our marriage is better than it's ever been before because of not because we just hoped it would be because of specific work and actions that we've taken, but I would use my own personal story, right? I mean, that's just because, because I could be so genuine telling that. And because when you say it's therapeutic, you're probably one of the first people that I've ever heard actually say that besides me, because telling my, like, like using my story and my marketing, I started doing this James back when I was like pretty early in my sobriety. 
And I would actually tell people that I was sober and I was, you know, in recovery. And by putting it out there, it actually gave me more accountability to stay sober because now I've declared this to like people, you know what I mean? Like, like the public, like I've posted it on social media and stuff like that. And it also helped me to lower that sort of fear of rejection and fear of people thinking that I was, you know, some sort of a, of, a, you know, a bad person or, or finding my skeletons in the closet, because I just went ahead and said, here's all my skeletons. Now, no longer you, nobody can use them against me. And I'm going to turn this mess into a message. And so I, I took what was at one time a, f- of a fear that I had. I'm, I'm afraid you'll find out that I was an alcoholic. I'm afraid you'll find out that I was a junkie. I'm afraid you'll find out that I was homeless. And, and, and I, and I just put that out there and said, this is where I came from. And, and this is what I'm doing about it. And this is how long I've been on this path. And, you know, and I use it as an inspirational sort of way to connect with people because everybody loves a hero's story. And each one of us has a hero within our story. We just, I think so often fail to see that what's coming up for you. As I say, some of these things about my own, you know, my own relating to what you just said. I, I, I agree. Um, I still remember the first day I put it out to the world on social media that I was an alcoholic. It was, it was a rough day for me and I was having a bad day and I'm like, I got to, I got to make me accountable. Mm. So I wrote this long post on Facebook and then ah, the phone started ringing and text started coming in. And I'm like, I'm fine guys. I just, I needed everybody to know that this is who I truly am. Yeah. And I've been carrying this with me for years and it's time to unleash it, so to speak. And mm. it's, it's my, it's the next step in my journey. Yeah. And, and I'm not looking for your sympathy. I'm just looking for you to understand that this is who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, I mean, that's, that's cool. And for those of you who are listening, wondering once again, are we, you know, I, I get this all the time over the past many years, people interpreting what we're saying here as like, go air your dirty laundry out and use your audience as your therapist. <laughs> That's not what we're saying. We're no. saying, we're saying simply that when you, the more authentic you can be in your marketing, the more that you can reveal, um, not just your wins, you know, James, everybody's the question everybody always has and says is, well, how can I, talk about anything if I'm not already ultra successful doing that thing. And, and, and my response has become, well, because people are even less concerned about all your success and everything that you've accomplished, it almost makes you come across as an arrogant ass. They're actually, it's more relatable when you share the occasional win, but you also share your losses and learning lessons so they can see that you're relatable and, and and you and you can be relatable. Yeah, show you know, me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me yeah. that you're show me that this is not just a big Instagram or TikTok facade BS story that you're always trying to make yourself look good because people now more than ever, they're more I mean, people have always been pessimistic, but they're they're pessimistic, they're skeptical, and 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 you just, you don't look real when all you try to do is share your successes and always try to look good on, in your marketing. It's just a dumb, it's just a dumb, but in, in, in here, let me, let me, let me be very clear. You guys are not, we are not as, as kind of, you know, internet marketers and solopreneurs and stuff, you know, influencers, whatever you want to call us. We are not Nike. We are not Apple. Okay, it's a different style of marketing. We're selling information and and we're doing it consumer to, like direct to consumer, right? It's not it's not really B to B. It's B to C, but it's it's actually more C to C. It's creator to consumer, right? So it's this whole different it's this never been done before thing, man. It's the internet is brand new and it's made it to where you literally 
basically come across as consumer to consumer, even though you know you're more in a creator role. So that's why I like to call it C to C, right? Creator to consumer. And 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 the more relatable, the more genuine, the more you can sort of kind of just let people into your life and make them feel like they're they know you. They genuinely, legitimately know you. They know who you are. And that's been my that's been the biggest thing that's blown me away over the past many years is that like like somebody comes on a wake up show or somebody I meet somebody at an event. I've never met them a day in my life, not a single word, and they know everything about me. They feel like we're best friends. Right. And that's the power of this is that you know, you get you get people sort of into your world by chumming the waters and bringing them to the boat with this good edutainment content. And then you get them watching your videos and reading your emails. And it's it think about back when maybe you had a pen pal at some time in life, how close you felt. It's like the ability to build a relationship nowadays through them reading your letters in email, them reading basically your letters on social media, them watching your videos. Dude, it is so powerful. And I just think that some of us just don't know what we have in our hands. And, and it sounds like you're beginning to really kind of get some of that feedback and see some of the results from doing this. And it really is, is kind of, it sounds like it's blowing you away. And not only are you getting, you know, some, some therapeutic value from it, but it's also moving the actual needle in your business. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. The, the strength and power, like you said, of the internet is just insane. And you don't truly understand it until you start putting yourself out there and you're on the Instas and you're on the TikToks and you're on the old Facebook and you're breaking out the old YouTube and making videos. And all of a sudden there's people commenting, there's people liking, there's people messaging. And it's like, wow, like these people are here to hear what I got to say and they want to know more. And I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I know it's crazy. It's, it's definitely crazy. It's, it's, you don't, you don't uh, really kind of understand it in, until it starts happening. And then you, you no longer become, you no longer become so like dependent upon like coaches and mentors. Like, you know, we all think we need like support and in, in coaches and mentors. And that's cool. We do. That's cool to have that. But the most powerful thing is when you become accountable to your actual audience and your customers, like that's when that relationship becomes the most important, not the relationship that you have with other people helping you, but the relationship you have with you helping other people. That's when the game changes. That's my experience of when the game changes, when somebody moves from struggle to success, is when they become, when they, when the most important relationship in their business is not other people helping them, it's them helping other people. And when you make that transition, that's when it's game over. Unfortunately, most people never make that transition because, you know, it's, it's, um, it's sort of like that employee mindset. We're too reliant on other people's opinions and on other people coming over and fixing the, the, like somebody coming over and fixing it for us. Like usually at a job, if something goes wrong, most people are just like, well, okay, you know, let's, we'll stand back until the boss or the company fixes this. It don't ma don't matter to me. Like I'm getting paid or else if I ain't getting paid, I'm going home. There's kind of that attitude. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like somebody else is responsible for it, but you know, in, in, as a business owner, you know, we are responsible for it. And when, when we, when we fully understand that and, and that the most important relationship between <coughs> us helping other people in us and in, instead of others, people always helping us, that's when, that's when that, that, that big shift happens. So that's my, that's my experience anyways, with, with working with tons of people and, um, and seeing the same exact thing happen every time. It's not like it looks different with everybody. It's the same exact shift always with every person. And the exact shift is when the most important thing 
goes from you needing somebody to help you to you focusing on helping other people. And when that shift happens again, it just, when it happens with an individual, doesn't matter where they came from, what their previous experience was, it, it, it's game over and, and there's no stopping them from there. That's right. It's, 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 it's like this unknown magical formula. You just got to figure out on your own and just, everybody's always looking for the magic easy button or the, the easy way, but until you're ready to serve as a purpose instead of chase the dollar, it's, I, I get a chuckle. I still, even to this day, Facebook messenger, these people will pop up and be like, Hey, how's it going? And what are you doing? And this is where I'm working. You should check it out. It's like, dude, yeah, we just met. Where's, where's the steak dinner in, in the beer? Like <laughs> trying to go for that. Take me out to dinner first. Home man. Run. Right, right, right back to the apartment. Yeah. No, I know it's that, it's that, it's that, it's that, it's that, it's that heart to serve, right? It's like, are you willing to get up and do this if you don't make money today? If you don't make money tomorrow, if you don't make money this month, right? Are, are you that invested in it? Are, you know, or, and, and it's hard to get into that mindset when you actually are living paycheck to paycheck or whatever. So nobody's saying that it's easy. Right. It's not, nobody say if it was easy, guys, everybody would be doing it. That's right. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. That's right. It's hard to get into a servant mindset and a servant heart when you need money to, but that's where part of that leap of faith comes in. That's where, that's where, you, you know, all of this, many of you guys have had all this spiritual training and this religious training. I mean, I know everybody on here is not religious and spiritual, but, you know, it's, I see people who are so prayerful and so faithful in their Facebook posts and their memes and their prayer this and faith this. And then it's like you get into a business and the faith just goes away. No more faith. No more faith. Yeah. Right. No more faith. Just not now I need, I need to see an outcome. I need to see a result. I need a guarantee. Right. Well, that, ah, sorry, that's contradictory to what, how you've been, what you've been talking about in other areas. Yeah. And it's easy to talk about faith and I'm not bashing guys. I'm a spiritual man. I'm just saying that I had to learn how to step out and take a leap of faith and know that, you know what, if I get into a servant's mindset, if I go and say, instead of making it all about me, and if I go and start worrying about every day, how can I serve people? How can I help people? How can I be, be there to make other people better off when they left than when they met me? Like James is talking about that, 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 that transformation, that shift that he went through. That's it. That's it. And that's when, that's when my business changed. And now today I feel like I'm still going through that because, you know, it's, it's, it's not, I'm not here because, you know, I need, I need to make sure the bills are paid, you know, and I don't say that to be an, an arrogant ass. I never try to be, I really try to be conscious of being arrogant, you know, because I have been arrogant in the past. And honestly, it was because I was, I was insecure inside. That's why I was being arrogant. It wasn't because I was like really actually confident. The more self-esteem I've built, the more humble I've become. But I, I come here every day because I really think that, but I really think that I have finally embraced that servant's mindset. And it's been a long journey, man. You know what I mean? Like it's been a long journey. I always think that there's levels, James, you know what I mean? Like once we think we got something, then all of a sudden it's like something will pop up to make us realize, damn, I don't, I may not have that as much as I think. I, I, got I, it. I, still, I still got further to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where I'm at. And I, I do feel like, like that really is, that really is kind of the key to is just always like being willing to grow to that next level and being humble and stuff like that. But, but you're, you're, you're gaining a lot of wisdom and a lot of awareness early in your journey. And that's, that's really helpful, man. Uh, I'm really happy for you that you're 
you've got that perspective because that'll give you good longevity versus being that that one hit wonder that we see so often in in entrepreneurship you know yeah for sure it's uh it's a journey like i know this is just the beginning and i know i'm gonna i'm gonna get to this plateau and i'm gonna make oh this is cool and it's gonna be like oh nope we gotta come up here now because there's still more to go yeah but you gotta keep pushing you gotta keep going and it's it's constant growth and it's constant learning and it's constant it's just it's constant it's evolving and you got to keep you got to keep that mindset you got to keep that in your heart that you're here to serve a purpose other than yourself yeah yeah it's quite a contradiction it's quite an oxymoron right it's like you know it's it's uh it, well it's it's hard to wrap your head around when you you're thinking about well, I'm the one who needs, I need, I, 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 I need to pay my bills. I need to do, you know, I need, where's my, when's my break? What's, where's, where's my breakthrough? I listen to these shows every day. I see all these people, all these people talk. When's my break coming? Me, me, my, my, my. And I'm not saying that self-preservation is not the, always going to be everybody's number one priority. And I'm not saying you're wrong to think like that. I'm just saying that there's a, you, you know, it, it's, it's like, um, it's kind of like speaking of spirituality. I think it's the Buddhist tradition that talks about detaching from outcomes, detaching from things, right? We have so many expectations and so much addiction to outcomes that if we can detach a little bit from those outcomes and be less addicted to a certain result happening. If I take an action, being addicted, this has got to happen. And if this doesn't happen, it means that I'm a failure. I should quit or I should, you know, change directions or whatever. Like that's an addiction to an outcome, man. And there's such power in detaching that. This is going to be my final question. Then we'll bring it in for a landing. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll have one more after this, but I wanted to ask you, do you feel like you have detached a bit from outcomes and been been able to be more present in the moment in your business to do what you need to do today instead of being so addicted to an outcome or about what's going to happen a month or or a couple of months down the road. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. My first couple of commissions came just from having conversations like this with people I knew. And I was like, "Sweet, this is awesome. This is going to be an easy sell." And those first couple of months, I was like, come on, what's going on? Why am I, why am I not getting it? Why these first two came so easy? Why, why, why? Hmm. And then I just stopped one day and I don't remember what it was. But it was something you said on one of these shows. And I was like, that's why right hmm. there. That's it. So I, I had to make the shift and look inward and be like, why am I here? Am I here just to make a buck? Or am I here for another higher reason? And it was at that moment I started changing my thinking and I started changing my approach. Mm. And then slowly things began to turn around and I began to see results. So, yeah, I've learned to detach from, from the addiction of the outcome. And I've learned to look, look more focused on the reason and the purpose. And how can I help that next person that sees this video or that next person that sees this Facebook post or that next interaction I have, how can I help them above and beyond what I'm doing? Yeah, that's great, man. That's great. That's really, really fantastic. Um, what, what has your experience been like here within legendary in our community? You touched on a little bit before, but wanted to circle back just on that in terms of the brand new person who's sitting here listening, wondering if we're, we're the real deal. Oh man, I got to tell you this, this environment and this community is amazing. Um, the best thing we ever did was jump in on that 15 day challenge and get involved with legendary and the blueprints just made it that much better. Anybody that's watching and is thinking about getting the blueprints, if you can get it, it's totally worth it. It's just been there's been so much learning and growth just from our experience with legendary alone, like learning about 
diversifying and generating multiple streams of income and digital products and marketing is so much more than just marketing. Mm. It's been, uh, it's been an amazing journey and I'm glad that we jumped on and became part of the legendary community. Well, I can tell you that there's a lot of people just, just from looking at the comments, but just everybody who's going to hear this even after, uh, is thankful that you, are a part of the community too, right? I mean, because this is the real kind of conversations and talk. You say you were listening to the show, now you're on it. And this has been this has been an incredibly like real and authentic and also very insightful in terms of some of those missing pieces, not always about the numbers, not always about the follower count. That's right. Uh, you know, th- those things will come, right? You become the person, then you get the money. You don't, you don't get the money and then become the person. If you get the money and don't become the person, you lose the money really quick. You know, you're not gonna last. that's right. You know, you see people go up and then they come down and it's like, well, they didn't do that inside work that those, those dynamics, it's all, they, they keep it all about the mechanics, right? But those dynamics, those things we've been talking about in the last 44 minutes um, are, are where it's, are, are, are where that longevity and that, um, I think ultimately it might be a little slower start, but where really you can have the uh, the big long term breakthroughs that we all want. We all, and I'm telling you, it's better to have a good, solid, strong income for many, many years to come because you've mastered the mechanics and the dynamics than one big shot to the moon with a real hard fall because you only focused on the mechanics. It's just. It's um, it's a much better journey. It's much more fun. It's much more stress free as well. And uh, I'll give the final word to you, my brother. I just, uh, it's like um, Robert Kiyosaki says in his book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Right? You cannot build a skyscraper on a poor foundation. You need to build the foundation, a strong, solid foundation, to build your empire on top of. And that's, that's how I look at it, and that's how we're making our journey. We're building that strong foundation so years down the road, as our empire grows, it's going to stay evergreen and congruent and just grow and grow and grow. Yeah. And, and I it, just it yeah. will. Hey, give my best to your wife also. She sounds incredible. And she, she sounds is like, amazing, amazing yeah. woman for putting up with my shenanigans all these years. <laughs> I mean, just also like an amazing support system that you have there with her. And it sounds like you've just got a best friend in your corner and good for you about that, man. That's truly how we look at each other as best friends. Yeah. 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 Well, I can relate. So James, look, uh, be well. Thanks so much, dude. And I hope you'll come back uh, it, when we reach out and, and absolutely to keep us posted. For sure. All right, my brother. Thanks for having me, brother. All right, be well, man. Thanks. Bye. All right, guys. I'm sweetly sure glad we got all of our tech challenges worked out at the beginning. I don't know if you guys noticed, but James was on his phone, and uh, he was actually on his computer when we got kicked off, and it just wasn't working. Um, But, you know, we stayed the course, and thank God we did because that was a great conversation, another great show. Um, as he said, get into the blueprints if you can. If you're brand new, first finish the challenge. If you want some swag, like these hats, we've always got people asking us about that. You can get them at belegendary.shop. And then also remember that we post these replays on YouTube and also on Apple and Spotify. So if you want to walk or exercise and listen to us, then you can do that as well. We love, love, love and think it's such a smart thing uh, in terms of building a structure and a routine for you to join us each and every morning live like you've done today and make it part of your daily routine and hopefully make it a goal to to one day join us and share your experience because we certainly would love to have you. Um, Guys, I want to put James's uh, TikTok handle back up. Go give him a follow. Connect with him. That's a guy that uh, is, a, is, a, is a good dude and you want to have he and his wife in your corner. All right. With that being said, we'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Wake up legendary. Get the hell out of here. 